Hi, and welcome back to our last segment of Community Hotline. I'm very happy now to introduce you to Jeff Speck, who is the conductor and artistic director for the Oregon Pro Art Chamber Orchestra. Thanks for coming again. Thank you for having me. It's good it's to see you. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Likewise. I always enjoy having you here, Jeff. So your orchestra is busy, busy, busy always, mm -hmm. and you have a fairly um, full concert season. You ha usually do what, four regular concerts a year? Is four, four subs as we call it, subscription concerts, four uh, major concerts, one summer event. Okay. Uh, and then we do a, a kind of a spattering of, of outreach and right. different types of smaller events You're smattering, throughout the yes. season. <laughs> so, um, for those who don't know about you, tell, tell, give us a little snapshot, if you would, about the orchestra, because um, it's not just one orchestra. There are several different components, and, and why you're a nonprofit and how that how that works. Oh, sure, sure. So, Oregon Pro Chamber Orchestras is a uh, 501c3 nonprofit regional orchestra association. Um, our mission is to provide the community with inspired musical performance, diverse music education, uh, and enriching uh, cultural entertainment. And one of the highlights of the of the organization is the chamber orchestra, of course, the uh, the nonprofit uh, chamber orchestra. But we also have a number of of outreach programs that we that we feature and that we, as we like to say internally, is parent. Um, and one of those is the youth orchestra program, a youth right. chamber orchestra program that serves students throughout the the Portland metro area and also uh, the Vancouver area. Right. right. Um, and. That that is one of our missions. So we have so we have uh, the the adult chamber orchestra and of course the the youth program uh, that that work together. The parent the the chamber orchestra is a parent group for the for the youth orchestra. Then we also have several other programs that we that we that we support. Uh, one is the John Kenneth Cole Composition Prize, which provides a, a young composer an opportunity to um, have his work performed, his or her work performed by the chamber orchestra, um, and that's now re received international. Uh, attention. We've re received wow. submissions now from from Europe and from uh, all across the United States, from Canada. It's uh, a which great is very honor. It, it is. It, it to, is to to, uh, and, and get that uh, to be the winner of that. Exactly, and the amount of talent that's out there is, is so exciting. Yeah. So we're so excited to be able to uh, uh, to be able to provide that that forum. Uh, and that's in the spring, usually, isn't it? That's is in the that spring. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so applications will be due sometime in March, uh, or submissions rather, uh, and then the performance will be on our season finale concert, which is in May. Um, we also have the Emerging Artist Solo Competition, which provides a young emerging artist to be able to uh, perform in a professional capacity with the orchestra, uh, and the idea is to help uh, help that person uh, build their resume to get more uh, more. Uh, visibility in the community right. uh, and the opportunity, of course, to perform major repertoire, full major repertoire with a with a symphony orchestra. And just that experience of being able to do that is not something every every kid who <laughs> plays music can get. You know, right. if you're good enough to get to that level, not every city has that. Uh, you know, opportunity. It's a really it's a great it's a great opportunity for for people. Now you've had some of the youth on here before playing, and um, and they were they were wonderful, and I, I loved it because they were they were so. You could tell they were just passionate about music, which was a wonderful thing. Having anybody passionate about something they do is, is beautiful. But how, how many of the kids actually go on to be in the in the regular orchestra? Do you is there a crossover there? I, on occasion, uh, we've had students who who will graduate. They'll go off to college. Some pursue music as a profession, either as a as a teacher or as a performer. Um, some move back to Portland area. Some some people move move Far abroad, yeah. uh, anywhere around the country. Um, actually, for or example, one world, of, I imagine <laughs> one of our new musicians actually for the for our program coming up this weekend um, is actually a, an alumni of of the. Uh, of the youth orchestra is, that right? is, yeah. is now actually teaching in oh, the Portland area. Lovely, I like mm -hmm. that. I imagine that uh, there are also those who just like to do it for the pleasure it brings them personally, right? They don't all mm -hmm. go into into uh, music as a career. Is that right? That's or, that's correct. I mean, yeah, and and that's the wonderful thing, wonderful thing about music, and especially what we try to uh, encourage and try to foster with what we do as as an organization. Uh, we want to share music with everybody, no matter whether someone has been playing professionally for thirty years or uh, someone who has never touched a musical instrument in life but just loves music. I mean, we just want to uh, inspire and connect with people through music. Right. We have a little um, role in here that um, Emily put together with some of the assets you provided, some, some of the music and, and things that I'd like to take a look at now, give people kind of a better flavor for what, the, what your uh, organization's all about. So I think we should take a look at that now. Great. Okay.
That's great. <laughs> Who is that guy that keeps appearing in there, though? <laughs> that was Edmund Stone. He, no, I he, actually was talking about you. But <laughs> oh, about me. I was going to say, I was say one, one of the guests we saw, we, we, we engage with, uh, with many, many local artists, uh -huh. many, many uh, guest artists that perform with us. Um, for example, we, there's one picture was Susan Smith, who, who's performed with us a number of mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. as a piano soloist. Uh, Edmund Stone, of course, who's with uh, Portland All Classical Radio, has appeared as a, as a concert host, and, uh, oh, and uh, I like to use the term mediator, but he's really, uh, really an MC. <laughs> <laughs> either one works. Yeah, either one works. You can't. It's it's really nice to be able to partner with the different organizations around town and to, to get the music out there. So, the concert that you have coming up is called Pulling Strings, mm -hmm. which I like. No that's pun the, intended. Yeah, of course. no pun intended. Of course not. Which is really that's really cute. But it's it, <laughs> referred to it as an invitational. What does that mean? So this concert uh, contains uh, musicians from who are who are from our normal rosters, but we also invite other string players from all around the Portland metro area and, and actually from the from oh. the region that surrounds Portland uh, to come play with us. So so you'll see people from who are regular fixtures in the huh? orchestra. It's a play date. Exactly. Come play with exactly. Us, yeah. it's, it's an opportunity to, to meet new musicians, to uh, to connect with new musicians, and uh, and to uh, broaden our, our outreach to the community. That's great. So this is going to be on Saturday, August 13th, coming mm -hmm. right up, 7.30 p.m. at, is that pronounced, Call Auditorium? Call Auditorium. Call Auditorium on at the Reed campus College. of Reed College. Okay, yep. okay. And you've played there before, haven't yes. you? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's our, our, uh, our we call it our standard home. That's where you're usually where we usually yeah. perform. And you occasionally play. Oh, don't you sometimes play over at Merrill Hurst too. At, at, at Mary's Woods at the Mary's chapel Woods, there yeah, at the yeah. at the uh, yes yeah. Yeah, over at the at near near Merrill Hurst right yes, in the same right, area. Right. Yeah. It's on the same side of the river. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, what what is uh, what do you think this concert is bringing that maybe you haven't done before in, in past concerts? Is there anything really special about it that people should know about? Well, all of our concerts we aim to have, to going, going along with our mission of, of providing uh, engaging uh, cultural entertainment. This this concert is a kickoff for our season, so it's so it's a lot. Uh, all of our concerts are, are fun, but this one this one has to be, is more geared towards a broad range of of, of people. Tastes and yeah, so I mean I mean young kids to, to old kids, we can we can all enjoy it. We can all have fun, and the idea is to just bring people together to who enjoy music. We have we we have some of the best uh, string orchestra music uh, uh, program for this this event, um, and it's an event for that anyone can relate to. Anyone can go in and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well then, since this is a kickoff, tell me what you have going forward then through the rest of the season. Do you have that all planned out? What, what, do we, what can we look forward to after this concert? Oh, sure. In October, we have our, our, our first, uh, first uh, subscription concert, which is called Autumn in Paris. And oh. that's an all French music concert. And that's, oh, that's coming nice. up on, on October. Just make sure I get the date right so I, I got it here. October 8th, again, at Call Auditorium. And that will feature uh, music by Bizet, by Debussy, by Eric Satie. Oh. Um, and ma many other French composers as well. Instead of, instead of springtime in Paris, we have autumn in autumn Paris. Autumn in Paris, I like yeah. That. I yeah, like yeah. that. It's, it's a d different, different twist on that, yeah, on that same yeah. idea. You do a lot of that little twisting. On oh, yeah, of course. Pulling <laughs> yeah. strings, that's what, that's yeah, what I do. Yeah, pulling strings, I that's like that. That's what I do. And then uh, also in October, we will be uh, doing a side-by-side -side con uh, combined concert with the Westland High School Chamber Orchestra oh. uh, and performing a work, uh, a live film score to the silent movie Nosferatu. Uh, a friend of mine, Bo Benson, he's a he's a composer, uh, wrote this film score, and it's absolutely wonderful. It's it's really really a fun wow. fun time. So uh, those who want to get into the the Halloween spirit uh, and see a, a, one of the iconic uh, Dracula movie uh, with a live film score. That uh, with sounds us. great. So where will that be? That will be at Westland High School's Performing Arts Center. And they're actually participating in yes. it as well. Yes. Yeah, so it'll be a mix of Opaco musicians and also uh, students from from the school as well. Oh, I think that um, sounds like. And a lot that'll be fun. October nineteenth. Um, and again, uh, all these uh, all the information about these concerts, tickets uh, can all be found on our website, website. as well. Okay. Um, and then coming up in in, uh, in late October, we have the final round of our emerging artist solo competition, uh, where we'll have uh, the the three or four finalists that that uh, that we want to select from uh, will be performing live uh, in a in a public recital. Uh, for their final round, and then a winner from that that event will be then selected to, to play in December uh, on the concert. On your concert, okay. So that so when that happens, you've been you've been winnowing it down 
mm -hmm. from however many. How many applicants do you usually get? It depends on the year. Uh, okay. We've had we've had as uh, as few as ten. We've had as many as as twenty five. Wow. Um, it, it it all depends on on it's the year. It's tough to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. isn't it, it is. There's a lot of talent, and and the the competition is open for people uh, sixteen up to twenty six. Okay. So it's a wide range of, of ability yeah. levels. The idea is to uh, find that emerging art, young emerging artist who is kind of on the 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 edge of starting their career as a musician to give them out there. Huh? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You've had some pretty young ones win, haven't you? Isn't that I'm trying to remember a couple of years ago it seems like you had uh, somebody that was like well, our winner, 18 or 19 or something. Our winner last year was 17 years 17, old. 17. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Sam Rogen. Was he was even a younger than I thought. Bassoon, bassoon player. He, yes, he, yes. Fan, fantastic musician. Yes. And for and, and you hear him play and you're like, how how can this kid be 17 years old? Yeah. And it's, it's absolutely amazing. So you know, you 16 year olds out there, don't be afraid if you you know if you've got that talent, you got that passion. And so and so the winner of that of that competition will then uh, perform with us in December for a December concert, uh, which will feature uh, Mendelssohn's Italian Symphony. Mm -hmm. We'll also have a, a, an appearance by our youth orchestra, and then of course the appearance of the the winner of the emerging artist competition. Is that where it's announced? It's, it's announced before that, and then then yes, he plays he yes. or she plays. Yeah, one, once that's a, yeah. One, once that person is determined, we'll we'll uh, work we'll them get, into the exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get their their name out there. Yeah, that's great. So then, so the last the end of the season. Your concert season is in May, is that? In May. In May, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so we'll have one more concert in, in, in March, which will uh, which is our classic series. That'll feature uh, a Mozart overture. It'll, it'll feature Beethoven's Second Symphony. And it'll also feature our principal clarinetist as Ooh. the soloist for the Mozart Clarinet Concerto. So that's oh, that's nice. a, that's an exciting concert that I'm looking forward to, just having all classical music on, on one, yeah. one event. And then we finish off the, the season at the uh, near the end of May uh, with our Symphonic Voices concert, and that will feature oh, yeah. uh, the Organ Park Chamber Orchestra and the Twalton Wilsonville High School choirs. Oh, fun. Uh, and we'll be performing uh, Foray's Requiem, which, oh. of course, I'm excited about all the music. I, I can't just say one. one yeah, you love it all, you love it exactly. all. Exactly. Tell me, before we run out of time, how did you get involved in classical music? Oh gosh, I, I've always had a love for classical music and music in general mm -hmm. uh, from a very, very young age. And I remember sitting in in, a, in, in assembly in in elementary school, I was about maybe kindergarten or first grade, and I remember the, the, the band played, and I just immediately thought, I want to participate, I want to be up there. You really? Know, I, I want to do music, wow. and that, that was kind of my, my impetus. And then as I started getting into it, uh, I found out that I had family, uh, longtime family that were professional musicians, uh, that owned theaters oh. and played for the silent movies, who played for the wow. John Philip Sousa band. Um, really? Kind of a wide background, kind of I'm like, it's, it's in the blood, so. Yeah, there you go, it's your pedigree, you have to, you have to follow that. That's great, okay, I, I, I like that. Um, what else do we need to know? We have just a, like a minute left. What else do we need to know about the Chamber Orchestra or, or this upcoming year? So any information about our organization, whether it's it's concert uh, concert uh, info coming up, guest artists, uh, ticket information, how to apply for the for the youth orchestra, um, how to submit it, make a submission for the John Kenneth Cole Composition Prize, or even the solo competition, can all be found on our website, which is okay. OregonProArt.org. It's art with an e. OregonProArt.org. Yes, that's right. That's right. Okay, great. I love, I always love hearing about it and um, listening to that there, I think people get a good feel for the, some beautiful music that, that they can, you know, they can take part of it as part of our community. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Jeff, for being here tonight. Thank you so much for having you us. You bet. And if you want to get more information, do check out their website. All the information is there. Uh, August 13th, Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at Reed College at the Call Auditorium. Do check them out. You won't be disappointed. I'm Monica Weitzel. I will see you here next week on Community Hotline.
what local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard.